So now in this video, we're going to look at my uh, two super capacitors, sets of super capacitors with boards. So they're in series. I got this one about a year and a half ago. So each one of these super capacitors is rated for 2.7 volts and 500 farad. So now they're connected in series though, using this board. And what that means is that uh, when we charge them, each one will charge at 2.7 volts if we fully charge them but we'll have 16.2 volts across all of them. It's the addition of all the voltage of the supercapacitors or the multiplication if you want to look at it that way because they should be equally charged at all times. Hopefully the board will uh, help make that happen. So these posts here, I added those, I bought them separately. They give me a good spot to uh, clamp alligator clips on there. So in any case, I made a video with this board and I didn't take very good care of it. First off, I knocked off that component somehow, but I was working a lot of hours. I wasn't properly storing it at all, and uh, I don't think I charged and discharged it properly. So I think that damaged it. Right now, it's pretty much worthless. We can look at that coming up and uh, if we want to. But in uh, any case, I got the replacement board now. So for the most part, the supercapacitors are kind of shaped different. We got uh, the ridge there instead of down there like this one and also they uh, they didn't solder on these points so these super capacitors they come with four points sticking out one negative one positive and apparently these other two are just for helping hold it onto boards like this so I'm probably just gonna leave them and uh, otherwise I don't think they're damaged at all the old board however is definitely damaged so let's look at the voltage across the entire board we can either go to uh, the points here there you can see 11.92 volts and there's little dots here where you can make a connection and I think that would make a good point to uh, solder if you're gonna solder something there but 11.29 and if we look at all the capacitors except for one we'll see they're all about the same voltage here about 2.35 and uh, that one's lower but uh, this one right now it's uh, 0.6 volts and this one when I charged them all up I independently charged them made sure that was 2.7 volts it just rapidly dropped down to probably about 0.6 volts I didn't measure it for a while but it was plunging rapidly right away so I think this one's fried probably uh, no way to uh, fix it I don't think so we have uh, the uh, new capacitor here I haven't done anything to it this is how it came in the mail and uh, we can see there's 0.86 volts across all of them or we could measure it here as you can see same voltage and if we measure each one of them we get a fraction of that and uh, I measured it earlier I'm not going to do it now but they all have about 0.16 volts in that range on them there we go once we get a good spot so these are uh, fully discharged just a tad bit above zero so now I ordered both these boards from eBay and so you never know with the uh, sellers on eBay how reliable they are or anything and uh, they're usually the worst for information so Amazon also sells this I paid about forty five dollars for each one of these on eBay and uh, on Amazon it was uh, it's sixty eight dollars for the same board but uh, they have more tips on how to take care of it so they say to uh, first charge it to 16 volts and then discharge it to uh, two to four volts in that range and then uh, charge it up again discharge it to do that six times and they they say that will prepare the uh, board so now to charge these series super capacitors, I'm going to use this bench power supply. First off, make sure the uh, alligator clips aren't connected. You can see that's where the uh, clips plug in. But uh, let's turn the power on. And right now current set all the way down to nothing and so is voltage. So I'm going to turn the dial up just a little bit. There we go. And right now it's set to a zero volts. We can set the voltage to whatever we want so we're gonna end up charging this to uh, 16 volts hopefully with no problem as long as each capacitor 
is uh, charging evenly. So let's just start it to uh, 16 volts. And now we just barely set up the current. So if I put the two alligator clips together, ultimately we're going to clip them there. But uh, I'll do that after the scene. But uh, no current will flow right now, just a tiny bit. So I clipped them together. We have about 30 milliamps of current in that range going through here right now. And the voltage cleared on there because there's uh, no resistance or anything here. Since the current freeze flows freely, you don't see any voltage built up on the meter. And we can increase the current. So we're going to increase it to 1 amp. So right now 1 amp of current is flowing from, uh, we're going to go positive to negative, conventional current. It's flowing through these alligator clips right now. When we clip it to the battery, so positive over here, negative over there, the current's going to be flowing through the capacitors. Now, these are, each one of these are 500 farad supercapacitors. When you put them in series, capacitance actually goes down. And so, one of them is 500 farad, since they should all be completely equal in value if they were made properly, then that means that we get a fraction of the capacitance while they're in series. So voltage goes up, but capacitance goes down. The uh, main benefit for connecting them in series is more voltage. That's really about it. Capacitance goes down. So we have six 500 super, 500 farad super capacitors in series. We're going to get one sixth of the capacitance. So it's going to be about 83. And what that means is for each amp of current we put from one side to the other, it's going to take about 83 seconds for each volt. So about 83 seconds to go from 1 volt to 2 volts and then about 83 seconds to go from 2 volts to 3 volts as long as current stays at 1 amp. So now let's actually connect it and uh, get started. Let's set the current down to uh, nothing. Let's set it to a little bit though. And so since we're charging we put the uh, red clip to the red side here which has a positive symbol there and then the uh, black clip to to that side there we go and now there's about 30 milliamps charging it according to that so we're gonna set that up to one amp as I said and you can already see that it did have some voltage we got that when we measured it and so I think we're getting a rapid voltage rise because of uh, resistance and stuff but it should take since we have about 83 farads of capacitance now with them in series it should take about 10 seconds or so before each uh, decimal point goes up it should take about 83 seconds more than a minute for each volt that's at 1 amp if we increased it to uh, 2 amps it would go twice as fast and it's going really fast now and I'm thinking maybe that's because the uh, capacitors have to uh, get some uh, chemistry thing going or something and so in fact I'm gonna lower the current I'm gonna try to take care of these so so anyways looks like it's charging fast but uh, that may be due to uh, resistance in there I'm not sure but in case I'm gonna charge it up to 16 volts. Um, I want to mention something. I mentioned that looked like the voltage was rising quicker than I thought it would maybe due to resistance. And that's because if uh, you studied uh, basic electronics, if you have a resistor, you put a voltage across it, you can measure that voltage across the resistor. So the resistor is not charging or anything, but there's a voltage buildup across it. And so if there's a little resistance here, maybe it's uh, showing more voltage than what the supercapacitors are actually charged to. And we might be able to tell that by lowering the current. And I don't see the uh, voltage dropping. So I don't think that's a problem. Let's go up to uh, 1 amp of current. But now you can see it's charging a lot slower than it was before. But uh, when we get to, uh, yeah, even at 1 amp, it's not charging as fast as it was it doesn't look like even though we have one amp of current so I'm thinking maybe 
these are these are polarized capacitors and I think a lot of their chemistry depends on a voltage being across them and they didn't have hardly any practically no voltage across them when we got them so it might be making some chemical changes now and uh, so hopefully half an amp is uh, perfectly to uh, safe to charge them for now and I don't even know if all of that is true I've read a lot about uh, super capacitors different tips for uh, protecting their chemistry and stuff and uh, you know it's just got to experiment with them and get the exact same ones and charge them differently and see if that affects how well they work or how long they last or whatnot but ultimately when uh, they're in working condition they should be able to accept pretty much whatever current you give them and so the Amazon site said up to 40 amps of current and I, I looked for uh, this website they said uh, 50 amps of current and so you gotta try to find the actual manufacturer that made it and go by their recommendations now we're uh, just about to hit the 6 volt mark so let's look at the uh, multimeter so first off let's see what the meter says the voltage is compared to the uh, bench power supply that we're using here and it's just a tad bit shorter no big deal really let's look at the value of this capacitor it should be about one volt and there it is one volt now we got the little holes there and the more obvious measuring point are the solder spots right there so we could uh, go to either one but let's measure each super capacitor and if uh, that one's just a tad bit shorter or lower than uh, the other two we measured that one's a tad bit higher so this is something to keep keep in mind and uh, for the most part though they're really close to that one volt so I'm thinking uh, charging it up to 16 volts probably won't be a problem they'll probably all still be under the uh, 2.7 volts now one more thing I did I set up the computer for an online stopwatch and as soon as this hits 7 I hit start and as soon as it hit 8 volts I hit stop and that took 2 minutes and uh, 18 seconds to get from 7 volts to 8 volts that was at 0.5 amps so now a little more times gone by so you've seen the voltage change but uh, I'm guessing that maybe their voltages rise even for a given current a bit faster when they're practically zero than uh, when they get closer to uh, the 16 volts but uh, hopefully if we measured the uh, full charge it would all add up to about 83 seconds per volt if it was one amp right now of course it's half an amp so it should take twice as long all right so now we're about to hit 12 volts so let's uh, take a final voltage reading and uh, call it quits so should be just slightly less than 2 volts for each one of them there we go looking good there looking good there I think this is the one that's been lagging behind a little bit just a tiny bit there but still pretty good I feel uh, confident we can skyrocket to 16 volts since these are all uh, 2.7 volts that means we can go to 16.2 volts so we got a little safety margin anyways of about 0.2 volts which I think will be uh, plenty so looking pretty good hopefully uh, this this uh, bank of uh, super capacitors will work out really nicely because there's a lot of interest in uh, my other videos where I used the uh, broken one so hopefully I can make better videos with this one so anyways if you stuck around this long thanks for watching and see you in the next one